seconds. Okay, so first of all, let's go out of this slideshow and we'll show you an existing Windows application and how the pen is able to work on top of it. The example I'm going to use is... Okay. Well, thank you very much, and we're going to see you later on in the segment for PenDOS, right? Right. Terrific. Our next demo is going to be another demo of PenPoint, um, this time from Clayton Weimer. You saw him in the first segment, but now we're going to take a look at a more in-depth demo of the PenPoint system. In the first segment, you saw a crossword puzzle and a, a chess game running on autopilot, but this time we're going to take a look at some more realistic applications of the PenPoint system. As I mentioned, Clayton is an employee of at t Microelectronics, where he's the manager of operating systems development. And he's also president of the Worldwide PenPoint Developers Organization, a group to handle the needs of people who write software for PenPoint. So now let's take a look at the PenPoint machine and Clayton Weimer. What have you got? Hello, David. Ooh, two machines. Yeah, wow. two. Well, the 880, as I showed before, and my own personal, personal communicator, the one I don't let my kids touch. However, I found out that they were touching it. <laughs> They, put, they like to stick stickers around. But this is my personal, personal communicator, and it's an EO440. It's found in all the AT&T phone stores, and actually my entire life exist, exists on a PCMCI card, that, which I s slip in into the slot right here. It takes a Type 2 PCMCIA uh, card slot. The other features of an EO440 is a uh, built-in fax data modem for landline communications of data, email, uh, faxing. It also, I have a cellular mo modem module attached on the back so I can make phone calls while I'm on the road or in the car. Of course, you'd be pulled over at the side of the road and come to a full and complete yes, stop. Yes, yes absolutely, okay. David. Just checking. And uh, in San Jose, that's no problem with the traffic. I'm uh -huh. s stopped anyway. And then there's a speaker and a microphone. And uh, in, inside the machine itself is a 20 megabyte hard drive, a Kitty Hawk drive by Hewlett Packard, our wonderful sponsors. And um, what else? There's so much to this, I just can't cover it all. Now I'd like to uh, go to the uh, operating system itself, which is Pinpoint, as you mentioned before. And let's take a look at it. Uh, in Pinpoint, is, as opposed to Windows for PIN, it's built for the PIN in, with it in mind. And they try to follow a pen and paper metaphor. The idea is if you're a mobile uh, commuter out on the road, uh, you don't really want to go, you don't really want to take your desk with you. So we try to get away from the desktop metaphor and go to a more natural interface, which more naturally would be a notebook metaphor. What we see here on the screen is a notebook. And organized is various doc d different kinds of documents in the notebook. And as you see, what I'm doing scrolling up and down the screen is what we call gestures, as was mentioned before. This is a scroll gesture for Pinpoint. I'm scrolling up and down the screen. Now, you deal with documents in Pinpoint. You go to documents. You turn away from documents. You don't have to worry about loading files, saving files, uh, or running applications. You just create documents. And that's a little bit of a different metaphor than you find in most desktop operating systems. For example, so I'd like to give you an example of uh, some more gestures. I showed you the scrolling gestures, and I'm showing you the expanding gestures. That's a uh, double tap. Uh, let's try to delete a document. I'm going to delete this document called Day Planner right here do an X right over it. Now that's intuitive. Uh, since it's an important thing to delete, I, I'm going to say no, I don't want to delete that. Another common gesture is a circle, and that consistently means throughout the system to edit, to change something. Uh, let's change it to, uh, I don't know, FUD, end. So let's cross that out. FAD. Let's write over it. Let's call it Federated. Let's keep writing. So what I'm renaming this document, uh, you notice in Pinpoint, if I didn't get it first right, I can always write over the letter. That's pretty nice to correct. This is an example of the character recognition. There's also cursive recognition, which I'll show you later on. I'm going to cancel that because I don't really want to rename that. 
Now I'd like to go uh, and create an actual document. That was a cr uh, carrot gesture to create something. Uh, let's create an ink writer document. Um, one thing I'd like to show is, yes, you do have your standard uh, select in menu pull down uh, buttons, but we normally don't use that in pinpoint. And if you get to be good at pinpoint like I am, uh, you get to know the gestures pretty well and you don't need uh, the standard way of operating things. So this is a particular type of document that uh, allows for basic data, ink input, and ink as a data type is very important in pin computing as opposed to ASCII. And why is that important? Well, if you're just writing ink on the screen, who cares about handwriting recognition if all you're going to do is read it yourself and use it yourself? Now, what's so important? Why is this better than paper? Well, uh, you can do things unlike, oops, all right. You can do things that you couldn't do on paper, s such as copy that the over. And also, maybe I want to embolden the for emphasis. Okay, And we can do things like carriage returns, just like you would see in a word processor program, except for this is for ink. Ink processing, I like to call it. Now, what makes this a personal communicator? Any, kinds of, any kind of document can be sent, either mailed or faxed. Let's mail it. And up pops a, uh, a cover sheet like you would find. Oh, this is a mail message. Let's send it as an ASCII file. And up pops uh, a standard cover message for you. And I'm not going to make a message. I'm just going to press on the to button. And it's going to activate the address book. Nice little clock there, huh? What do you think? Come on, Papa. And let's send it to uh, AHA, add the recipient, pop, and send it off. And off it goes. Now, if my outbox down here is activated, then I'm going uh, to get it sent right away if I was connected to a landline or if my cellular modem was uh, powered up. I'd like to show you real quickly the, uh, the other parts of viewing what's in your address book. This is the address book. And this is the day planner. It keeps organi it organizes all my appointments and all my to-do items and such. And it's all one different various views upon the uh, database, an object-oriented database built within Pinpoint. That gives you a little idea of how well integrated all the document applications uh, work together. And uh, I hope to show a little bit more later on. Okay. Yes, you're going to be back in the uh, last hour to show us a more in-depth demo of this particular machine. Yes. So that we have, so we can take a look at uh, one particular red pen computer in depth. Now, the two machines you have here, these represent the current state of the art in pen computing. These are the top of the lines. Yeah, these are the first two offerings by EO Corporation. The 880 is a little tablet-sized traditional pen computer. This is a little smaller, but it's the same resolution as the 880. 480 by 640 pix, uh, pixel resolution. And of course, we expect to see smaller items uh, earlier th later on this year. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the overall vision is a wide variety of form factors. Okay. Um, now, the, the two machines that I see here, these are not DOS machines. These don't have Intel chips, right? No, this is the Pinpoint operating system. It's an operating system built for pin types of applications from the ground up. It wasn't considered uh, important to have program com compatibility with your desktop machines. The major compatibility issue is data compatibility and the personal communicators are built with that, those functions to help you handle that. Kind of so thing. while I couldn't run a copy of say Lotus 1, 2, 3 or Excel on here, I could exchange files with the desktop machine that is? Absolutely. There's a very sophisticated import-export mechanism built within Pinpoint with a communications functionality built in. It makes that rather easy. Okay. Well, thank you very much, and we'll see you again later on. Okay, dear. Our next